Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk NFL playoff football. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say out the gate, um, I expect Kansas City to beat the Houston Texans this weekend, right? Kansas City is a big favorite, right? But I do think you need to structure the bet in such a way that you minimize or eliminate the risk of a backdoor cover. Let's quickly talk about the reasons why I think KC beats the Texans. Right, number one, I think revenge is in the air. Understand, when KC went through a swoon during the season, right, Pat Mahomes was banged up for a while there, the Texans came into KC and beat KC in KC, right? That's an easy motivational tool that a seasoned coach like Andy Reid can use to motivate his troops, to keep them from being complacent, right? Understand, too, the Texans are an illusion. They were outscored by opponents during the regular season. Right? Add up the points they scored during the regular season. Add up the points their opponents scored. And you'll find out that their opponents scored more than they did. That's a rarity for a playoff team. If you look at their numbers, they have a great quarterback. To me, he's one of the very best. And I mean that. Very best in football. But the team around him has very average numbers. Right? Very average numbers. The defense statistically is a little below average, believe it or not. Right? The offense, barely above average. Understand, too, as elusive as Deshaun Watson is, and you saw that on that key play last week where... He's hit by two guys, he's still upright, he rolls out, he hits a guy with a pass, they get in field goal range, right? As elusive as he is, he got sacked many times by the Buffalo Bills. That's the state of the Texan offensive line right now. Now understand, on the KC side of the ledger, let's talk about defense. KC's defense is peaking. Would it surprise you to know that statistically, at least in my opinion, Kansas City's defense is better than the Houston Texan defense? Understand, too, there are certain coaches in this league who, when they have extra time to prepare for games, they are exemplary, right? Andy Reid, year and year out, right? Year in and year out seems to have Kansas City ready to play at the very beginning of the season. He's a creative type who comes up with plays that defensive coordinators just aren't ready for until they've had time to adjust. So I've noticed Andy's team start fast, then they taper a little bit. People start to have films on the plays Andy came up with over the summer. Well, understand, Andy Reid has a great record coming off of a bye week. And, of course, KC has known for a while that they were in the catbird seat in the AFC West. Right? They pretty much knew that. They were preparing for the playoffs. Andy now has had a bye week. I think you should not overlook the coaching gap here. Right? Bill O'Brien, decent coach. Andy Reid, a magician with extra time to prepare. I think the coaching edge goes to Kansas City, right? Understand, too, KC has the reigning MVP at quarterback. While everyone is hot and bothered about Lamar Jackson this year with the Ravens, understand, Pat Mahomes last year passed for over 5,000 yards, right? Understand. Pat Mahomes right now is having a Hall of Fame career. Finally, understand too, Kansas City is at home. That's huge. Not only are they rested, 
They're the home team. Right? The Texans are coming off an emotional win. Everyone, I'm sure, is riding that emotional roller coaster, but then they're going to have to go to the airport. They're going to have to hop on the plane. They're going to have to go to KC. They're not going to be sleeping in their bed. They're not going to have their neighborhoods, their family, their familiarity right around them. KC is going to have all of that. So I expect... In terms of outcomes this week, the game that I feel is the best, let's say, game you can predict the winner of, I feel is Kansas City beating the Houston Texans. But, and it deserves a but, I don't like the line. Because understand, in the playoffs, all these teams are interested in is winning. They're not interested in covering. And when you have a line that's well over a touchdown, like this line, you risk having Kansas City take players out of the game. Right? I wouldn't be surprised if Andy Reid builds up a lead and then says, hey, I'd rather know that my quarterback, Pat Mahomes, is healthy for next week's game. Right? For the conference championship game. We have this one in the bag. Pat, why don't you come and sit next to me? Or Pat, rather than us call deep plays, which we would do if this were the regular season and, you know, we weren't trying to protect players. I'm just going to have you hand off the ball. I'm not going to have our optimal offense out there because we have this game in the bag and I need you for next week. So when you get in this territory, where the line's nine and a half, ten points, depending on where you go, right? The way I'm playing it, and to comply with YouTube requirements here, this is how I have to couch it. I'm not telling you how to play it, I'm just telling you the way I'm playing the game. I expect KC to win, I'm fearful of a backdoor cover. KC is the two seed in the AFC if they win and if the Ravens win. KC has to travel to Baltimore where they're almost certain to be the underdog in next week's game. That's if Baltimore gets by the Titans. Let me repeat that. That's if Baltimore gets by the Titans. So, what I want folks to consider is that there's some betters like me out there who've decided, okay, I think Casey's going to win this game. I don't want to lay the nine and a half. I don't want to play games with teasers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take KC to win the whole thing outright. Rather than get these terrible odds, right? If you're going to take KC on a money line, you're paying too much. I'm going to have the casino pay me a plus 350, or at least give me a plus 350 on the odds. Now understand, even if you don't think KC can beat Baltimore next week, you can easily make a profit here by just taking KC, at least is what I'm going to try to do, take KC to win the whole thing at a plus 350. And then if Baltimore beats Tennessee next week, you can then take the other side of the play, right? You can take Baltimore to win, right? And then be on both sides of the play. Make a profit if Baltimore wins because you're getting a plus 350 here, right? So rather than take KC at an outrageous point spread, or rather than pay ridiculous odds to take KC here on a money line. The play I like is to take KC to win the Super Bowl here at a plus 350. Right? Next week, you can lock in profits by simply taking the other side of the play. Right? Taking Baltimore on a money line or, depending on the point spread, fooling around with that. Right? I expect KC to beat the Texans. Another game that I think has value this week. 
involves the most underrated team, in my opinion, that's left in the playoffs. And somehow, incredibly, incredibly, they're being overlooked by the market, even though they're the two seed in the NFC. How could Aaron Rodgers be on a team where the defense is the team's calling card? Where Russell Wilson has done poorly playing at Lambeau? Right? Think about it. Where Aaron Rodgers has one of the league's best touchdown to interception ratios this year. Right? This year. And how could Green Bay only be laying four points given the level of injuries that the Seahawks have? Understand, the Seahawks' number one running back is out. Understand, the Seahawks' number two running back is out. Understand, Marshawn Lynch, who wasn't even playing football a month ago, is now a major part of the offense. And while he looks good around the goal line, he doesn't look good in terms of yards per carry. He doesn't look fast. So you have an elite defense playing outdoors, right? In a signature environment, very hard for opposing teams to win in Lambeau, in the playoffs going up against a team that, quite frankly, is banged up and is going to necessarily have to be one-dimensional. Understand, too, I know last week Metcalf made some plays, and I know Chris Collinsworth felt that Metcalf should go in the top half of the first round and stuff like that. Can we agree that the Seahawk receiving core is not exactly Jerry Rice and John Taylor? Right? Russell Wilson is throwing to young guys like Metcalf. Now, I know Russell Wilson is a magician. I know he's had success. But aren't you concerned that everyone in the stadium knows that Wilson is going to have to throw the ball? And that the team he's playing has one of the league's better defenses. Forget the Aaron Rodgers side of the ledger which I think is a huge side of the ledger that should put Green Bay well over the top. We're just talking about Green Bay's defense here. Folks, they know that Wilson doesn't have some cards to play. As good as Russell Wilson is, and I would have picked him as MVP this year. Right? His team is going to be more tired than Green Bay. Right? Seattle just had to play last week. Think about it. Right? His team's going to be more tired. They're going to be in a tough place to play where Wilson has had hardly any success. And everyone knows Wilson doesn't have the Derrick Henry on his team to, to hand the ball off to. Right? Think about Pete Carroll for a second. Pete Carroll's a guy who's known to have backs like Reggie Bush, Marshawn Lynch in the backfield. A big part of Pete Carroll's success over the years has come from his running back. Folks, he doesn't have one right now. Marshawn Lynch is doing as well as a guy who wasn't playing a month ago can do. Right? I'll give Marshawn Lynch applause for the effort he's making. He's not who he was. He's not a back who anybody believes you can hand the ball to 25 times. Russell's going to have to throw the football against an above average defense. Let me also say too, you heard me criticize the Texans earlier, saying how could this team be in the playoffs when they've given up more points than they scored in the regular season. Well, think about the number seven. One touchdown. 
That's how many more points Seattle's offense has scored than their defense gave up this year. Right? Seven. They outscored their opposition by seven points. Is it possible that this team, and I know they had a lot of wins, I agree, they come within about an inch of beating the Niners twice. Right, I'll agree they had great moments this year. No question about it. But is it possible that this is a team that has a Superman at quarterback and not much else? Right, is it possible that this team is actually somewhat limited? So I expect Green Bay to beat Seattle here again, right? I want to get the best odds possible, so I don't want to put fool around with a point spread when incredibly casino sports books, for whatever reason, and it's an absolute head scratcher, as I make this video with Green Bay as the two seed in the conference. In other words, they're in the same position in the NFC that Kansas City is in the AFC. And believe it or not, while KC is going off at a plus 350 to win the Super Bowl, I can get the Packers at a plus 850. Not even a plus 400, a plus 500, a plus 6, no, no, a plus 850 to win the Super Bowl. Has anyone figured out that if Kirk Cousins and Minnesota beats Jimmy Garoppolo in his first playoff game that Green Bay would actually be hosting the NFC Championship? Has anyone figured that out? Let me say that I think, hypothetically, that the San Francisco 49ers are just a loaded team. We'll forget the close wins. Right, that fourth down play where George Kittle catches the ball, gains a lot of yards, and they're able to squeak by the Saints. We'll forget the fact that you're looking at replay closely to see whether Seattle's guy has gotten in the end zone on Seattle's last offensive play where the refs then determine that the guy misses the end zone by about this much. We'll forget that San Francisco in December isn't the San Francisco team that came out the gates fast in September and October. Right? Let's say I believe that San Francisco is the top of the mountain, that there is no way, no way, that Aaron Rodgers, with one of the league's best defenses, can beat them in the NFC Championship game, right? That there's no way Cousins and Dalvin Cook could beat them this weekend. Well, understand, if I'm getting a plus 850 on the Green Bay Packers, then here again, I could lock in a profit by simply taking San Francisco next week right you understand the odds are so skewed that san francisco is not going to be that much of a favorite over aaron Rodgers in the nfc championship game so if you don't want to lay more than a field goal against seattle you can simply take green bay right to win the whole thing and then hedge the play next week if green bay wins understand if Green Bay loses, you wouldn't have won. <laughs> you wouldn't have won your bet laying points anyway. Nor would you have won Green Bay on a money line. So if you're on the right side of the play, let's say you, you think Green Bay wins this game, and that's how you're going to bet. If you're on the right side of the play, then I know I'm going to take Green Bay to win it all. And then hedge it next week. Let me also talk about another benefit of that. Let's say Kirk Cousins and company, who were given no shot, 
Same type of betting spread against the Saints just last week. Let's say Kirk Cousins and company actually look like the team that they are on paper. Has anyone looked at Kirk Cousins' numbers on paper this year? I keep hearing that the guy's supposed to be, you know, some deer in the headlights type quarterback. But folks, that, that's not what the numbers show. <laughs> Kirk Cousins this year statistically has been an absolute stud at quarterback. Understand, a lot of great performances have been blinded by Lamar Jackson's clear MVP performance, right? But understand, Kirk Cousins has had a whale of a year. Also, I know there's concern about Adam Thielen's health. You know, the last time I checked, didn't they have Stephon Diggs on this team? Isn't he supposed to be healthy? <laughs> also, I know Dalvin Cook is going up against one of the league's best run defenses. No question about it. But don't you take comfort in the fact that Dalvin Cook is one of the league's best running backs? Folks, look at his numbers, then realize this is a guy who missed games. Then you're saying, whoa, wait a moment. He had these numbers missing games? Right? Also, understand, too, San Francisco, excellent secondary. No question about it. But, but the Vikings are one of these teams that have excellent tight ends, right? One way to dampen a secondary is to, have is to have receivers other than your wide receivers, right? Guys who can catch the ball out the backfield, tight ends who can catch the ball, right? Doesn't Minnesota have that? So if Minnesota were to upset the Niners, and let's be clear on the coaching with the Niners, Right, Kyle Shanahan was the guy who New England should have given a game ball to for winning that Super Bowl. Wasn't this the genius who is in field goal range against the Patriots and then decides to have Matt Ryan drop back to pass the football? Wasn't Kyle Shanahan the genius who has Pete Carroll capitulating? Carroll's out of timeouts. Think about it punts the ball to Kyle Shanahan. In other words, if Shanahan does two running plays with the Niners and there's like 20 seconds left on the clock, right, then understand he could have then taken shots downfield to get in field goal range to beat Seattle. And Pete Carroll couldn't do anything about it, right? If he failed at that point, Carroll wouldn't have had the time to have Russell Wilson do anything about it. Well, understand Shanahan, who is penny-wise, pound-foolish. This is a guy missing the big picture, right? He's the academic guy. These are the kind of people running the Federal Reserve, Right? He's academic, he's smart, he's intelligent. Suddenly you have negative interest rates. Right? Suddenly you have a crisis in the repo market. Because the guy's missing the big picture. What the Niners did in that first game against Seattle was they passed the football. They didn't get the first down. <laughs> the incomplete passes stopped the clock. So think about it. Of all the strategies the Niners had, the one they used gave Russell Wilson the football with time left on the clock. <laughs> Folks, in the entire National Football League, there are a few guys you don't want to give the football back to with time left on the clock in the closing seconds of a game. Right? Tom Brady, you don't want to do it. Aaron Rodgers, you don't want to do it. Russell Wilson, you don't want to do it. You would hope your head coach had enough common sense to say, you know what, of all the possible strategies we're going to use, that's not one I'm going to pursue. Well, Russell Wilson got the ball back, thought it was Christmas. Came downfield, and of course, Seattle ends up winning that game. Right? Kyle Shanahan is smart. The question is whether he sees the big picture. 
if Minnesota upsets, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bet the game. Well, put it this way. If I had to bet that Niner Minnesota game, I'd probably be on the Minnesota side of the ledger. Right? Getting the points, getting a touchdown. That's a key number, seven. Right? Kyle Shanahan strikes me as a little bit too theoretical. Right? Not reality based. Right? But understand if Minnesota wins that game, then the NFC Championship game will be played in Green Bay. Right? Aaron Rodgers and Minnesota know each other. Just food for thought. If I'm getting a plus 850 on Green Bay to win the Super Bowl, and if I can get a plus 1400 on the Vikings, folks, they just took out the Saints in New Orleans. If I can get a plus 1400 on the Vikings to win it all, does it really matter to me if I have those positions? Who wins an NFC Championship game between Green Bay and Minnesota? I'll have leverage going into the Super Bowl. To sum up, I think Kansas City beats the Texans the way I'm playing it this weekend. The way I'm playing it is Kansas City plus 350 to win it all. With the idea that I can hedge next week and pick up the profit that I'm not going to collect this week. Right, I could take the Ravens, and if the Ravens win, I say, okay, fine. I'll, I'll take the profit. If the Ravens lose, guess what? I'm still live with a part of the KC plus 350. Right? In the Green Bay-Seattle game, I like Green Bay to beat Seattle. Right? Rather than lay four points, this is a game I would consider taking the money line, but rather than lay four points, I'm going to play around with the plus 850. Green Bay to win it all. Understand, when you take these win it all bets, it's not necessarily to have the team win it all. Rather, it's to have a hedging opportunity later. Let me also say too, I'm not convinced that the Tennessee Titans are a fluke. I keep hearing about the Baltimore Ravens secondary. Guess what? I don't have to worry about them that much when I have a racehorse. I have Derek Henry in the backfield. Folks, this guy is like prime Earl Campbell. I think he had five runs of 10 yards or more against the Patriots. Damn good defense. Right? One way to take a secondary out the game is to run the football. Also, has anyone figured out that the Titans are a hell of a lot better with Ryan Tannehill than they were with Mariota? I mean, a hell of a lot better. So with the Titans, look, I know the Ravens have everything statistically going for them. MVP at quarterback, great defense, great run. The last few games have been tremendous. Hard to argue against this team. Super Bowl winning head coach, one of the best, John Harbaugh. Right? Hard to argue against the Ravens. Right, but they did just beat San Francisco, didn't they? There are some games where Lamar didn't have 300 passing yards, right? Ingram's supposed to be banged up, isn't he? All I'm saying is, look, you could believe the Ravens are going to win this. But we're in the world of hedging. Tennessee, 28-1. to 1. To win the Super Bowl. Right? 28 to 1. Why not sprinkle just a few dollars? If you're shocked, if you're shocked by an upset, if Tennessee comes out, runs the football, this is football. They're turnovers. Sometimes better teams lose. Sometimes, you know, they're turnovers that can change games. I'm just telling you, Tennessee, if you look at them statistically since Ryan Tannehill took over this team, they are downright scary. Rather than be unprotected, right? You can, you can believe in the Ravens, the one seed. Rather than be unprotected, why not sprinkle just a few dollars at 28 to 1 odds? 
on Tennessee to win it all. Understand, if they pull the upset, you can bet against them the rest of the playoffs and still make money because you've gotten such ridiculous leverage here. Understand, too, Tennessee, because of their seeding, would almost certainly be an underdog in every game they play. Right? So, I expect KC to beat the Texans. I expect Green Bay to beat Seattle. I'm playing both of those games through futures. Right? I'm not laying nine points, nine and a half. I'm not laying four points. Right? Green Bay, I'd think about also taking on a money line. I haven't, but I think about it. Right? Those are the games that I like just outright here. For betting purposes, Minnesota at plus 1,400. The Titans at plus 2,800 to win it all. I think both of those teams are live dogs. Right? I think you're getting enough points with both of them to think about the point spread line because point spread lines don't give you the leverage. And I want to beat the casino, not just win one bet. I'm fooling around in the futures market with both of those teams. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you're playing this weekend a different way, right? If you believe the Ravens and Niners are going to cover, If you believe Kansas City is going to cover and you think people should take the risks inherent in a point spread and overlook the possible leverage of the futures market and hedging, then tell us about it in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.